Hi everybody, I'm Steve and I'm here this morning at UCLA in Los Angeles and I'm here in front of Royce Hall where so many movies have been filmed over the years. And I thought I'd take a walk from here over to the Westwood Village Memorial Park which is about five, six blocks away and tell you a little bit about the connection between UCLA and the cemetery. And along the way, I'm gonna stop and show you some really interesting historic landmarks and filming locations. Thanks for joining me on another trip down memory lane. If you've ever seen a movie or a TV show, chances are pretty good that you've seen the campus of UCLA and especially Royce Hall. So that's why I decided to start my video today right here at this popular cultural landmark. The University of California, Los Angeles, or UCLA, first opened in 1919, which makes it 100 years old this year. So happy birthday, UCLA. And over the past 100 years, it's appeared in nearly 300 movies and TV shows. And many of the scenes have been filmed right here at Royce Hall. And you can see why. It's a very photogenic building, and when most of us think of college campus, I think this is probably what we picture, and maybe because we've seen it so often in the movies and on TV. Some of the movies and TV shows filmed here include one of my favorites, and one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion, The Graduate, also Old School, Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School, and by the way, He's buried at Westwood Village Memorial Park, just a few blocks away, and will end at his grave. Abbott and Costello's Here Come the Coeds, The Godfather, Charlie's Angels, Melrose Place, The A-Team, Beverly Hills 90210, Dynasty, and on and on. Royce Hall is one of the four original buildings on the campus, and it was built in 1929 in the Italian Renaissance style. In addition to the hundreds of movies and TV shows that have been filmed here over the years, there have also been dozens and dozens of famous people who have attended UCLA over the years. From Marilyn Monroe, who's also buried just a few blocks away, and I'll show you her grave at the end of this video as well, to Jackie Robinson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Leonardo DiCaprio, James Dean, Jane Mansfield, Steve Martin, Heather Locklear, Ben Stiller, Walter Koenig from Star Trek, and many others. And if any of you watching ever attended or graduated from UCLA, please share your memories and stories in the comments down below. Now I'm going to head south down to the Westwood Boulevard entrance to the campus. To walk from here to Westwood Village Memorial Park through Westwood Village is about two and a half miles, I think, and takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you want to walk and how many stops you make. One of the most popular places on campus for selfies is the statue of the school mascot, the Bruin or Bear. The plaque says that it was presented to the campus on September 30th, 1984 by the UCLA Alumni Association on the 50th anniversary of its founding. and I had to wait in line for a while, but I couldn't leave without a selfie. Another famous UCLA alumni is pro tennis player and legend Arthur Ashe. Ashe earned a scholarship to UCLA back in 1963, but sadly on February 6, 1993, he died from AIDS-related pneumonia at the young age of 49. It's believed that he contracted HIV from a blood transfusion that he received during heart bypass surgery. Shortly before his death, he founded the Arthur Ashe Foundation and the Arthur Ashe Institute for Urban Health. And it seems appropriate that the Arthur Ashe Student Health and Wellness Center is located right next door to the UCLA Athletic Hall of Fame building. Continuing on, I'm almost to the Westwood Boulevard campus entrance. And this is also where the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center is located. Here's the entrance from across the street. The most direct route to Wilshire Boulevard in the cemetery is this street, Westwood Boulevard. But the most scenic route, at least in my opinion, 
is one street west, which is Broxton Avenue. And that's the street I'm going to take. And here's every student's favorite subject. Has anyone tried cauliflower crust pizza? I'd be curious to know what it tastes like. Not exactly the Shakey's pizza that I grew up with. This is the first time I've noticed this memorial sign here. So I just Googled him, and it turns out that Crowley was a detective lieutenant with the LAPD who was murdered at the Fox Westwood Village Theater across the street. The two suspects who were there to rob the theater were executed in San Quentin the very next year. Crowley was only 32 years old, and I'm sure this was pretty shocking back in 1932. And it would still be pretty shocking today when nothing seems to be shocking anymore. Westwood is probably one of the nicest and safest neighborhoods in all of Southern California. The Fox Theater Westwood Village opened in 1931 and is now a Los Angeles historic cultural monument. Many of the most popular movies of all time have premiered here in this theater, from A Star is Born to James Bond to the Harry Potter films. I don't remember if they premiered here, but I do remember seeing Chariots of Fire and Victor Victoria here when they first came out. With so many old historic movie theaters like this going out of business, it's really nice to see this theater and the Fox Bruin across the street still showing movies here in Westwood. In my 20s, I spent a lot of time here in Westwood Village, and I remember seeing lots of movies in both of these theaters. So just being here today brings back lots of good memories. The Fox Bruin Theater, which is right across the street, opened in 1937, and is also now a Los Angeles Historic Cultural Monument. Some of you younger viewers may remember that the music video Praise You by Fatboy Slim was filmed here at the box office right in front of the theater. And talk about a real trip down memory lane, Disney's original animated movie Dumbo came out in 1941. And I'm guessing that it probably played in one of these theaters. It might have even premiered here. And here we are 78 years later and a live action version is now in theaters. Here's a picture of me and my brother Bruce riding the Dumbo ride at Disneyland back in the 1960s. If any of you have vintage pictures of yourself at Disneyland that you'd like to share in a future video, I'll put my email address down below where you can send them. And how weird is this? Quentin Tarantino's long-awaited movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, is coming to theaters in July, and look at the movie poster. Behind the actress is the Fox Westwood Theater that's just across the street. Sometimes these trips down memory lane seem more like episodes right out of the Twilight Zone TV series. Continuing my walk south on Broxton Avenue, this sign reminds me of the first time I ever had a falafel. I think it was right here in Westwood. If you've never tried one, I highly recommend it. And if you have an electric car, you're in the right city. It's been quite a few years since I've walked around Westwood Village, but the last time I was here, I don't remember seeing these movie plaques embedded in the cement, similar to the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I guess this is Westwood's movie walk. These are plaques honoring the movies, and it appears that these are mostly Academy Award nominated and winning movies. And if you follow them, they lead you like breadcrumbs directly into this plaza of shops and restaurants. So if you're a movie buff, you'll want to check it out. It's a block or two north of Wilshire Boulevard on Broxton Avenue. So right here on the corner of Westwood Boulevard and Wilshire Boulevard, is the Hammer Museum. And right across the street and one block east is the Westwood Village Memorial Park and our final destination, so to speak. It's also the final resting place of Armand Hammer, who this museum is named after. So that was a nice walk. And here I am at Westwood Village Memorial Park. And just inside the gates to the left is the private mausoleum of billionaire art collector and philanthropist Armand Hammer. 
As I mentioned, his world-class art museum is located right across the street. And if there's still anyone on the planet that hasn't visited or seen Marilyn Monroe's final resting place, her crypt is just inside the front gate to the left and then all the way to the end of the street and to the left. And across the center lawn section from Marilyn's crypt is the gravesite of actor and comedian Rodney Dangerfield, who I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I'll pan around so you can get a better idea of where his final resting place is located. And as I mentioned earlier, Charlie's Angels also filmed at UCLA. And actress Farrah Fawcett, who was one of the stars of Charlie's Angels, is buried right next to Rodney Dangerfield. Of the hundreds of famous people buried here in this memorial park, I'm sure there are probably many others who have connections to UCLA or Westwood, but these are the only ones I'm aware of today. For those of you who watched my recent Gilgan's Island video, I have a correction to make. At the beginning of the video, I visited the Echo Park Lake near downtown Los Angeles. I stated that according to the Roadside America website, the tiny island in the lake was used for some of the outdoor filming locations on Gilligan's Island. A number of super fans of the show sent me comments to let me know that Roadside America was incorrect. Dozens, if not hundreds, of movies and TV shows have been filmed at Echo Park Lake, but apparently Gilligan's Island was not one of them. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who informed me about the mistake, and I especially want to thank Peter Petrucci, who's pictured here, for sending me documentation and photos. Peter's a classic TV historian and collector. He also has a Facebook page devoted to classic TV shows that many of you might want to check out. I recently invited subscribers to email me photos taken on road trips during the past where you've posed for a picture in front of a famous landmark or destination, and Connie Carpenter sent me these two photos. This is Connie standing in front of the famous Blue Well of Catoosa, Oklahoma, located on Route 66. And this is a picture of Connie standing in front of a famous filming location. This is the Outsiders house used in the Outsiders movie, and it's now a museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So thanks, Connie, for sending photos from your own trip down memory lane. And I'd also like to thank Richard Sasserath for becoming my latest Patreon supporter. Your postcard will go out in the mail this week. If you'd like to receive a postcard that I pick up from one of my trips, click the link down below and become a Patreon of this channel. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you'll be notified when I upload future videos like this one. So until next time, thanks for sharing the memories.